Hey Gary, how are you doing? Yes, I'm well, Chris. How are you? Yep, all good down here at the training ground where currently you're, uh, because of COVID, you've not been around the place. Are you missing us? Well, I'm missing you all very, very much indeed. You know, part of the um, COVID lockdown has caused a lot of problems for people. We call it COVID fatigue. And usually that's caused by people unable to socialise with their loved ones and work colleagues and family. Uh, and it's certainly a highlight of my working week to pop down to the training ground to see Carl and the players and the, and the coaching staff and the medical staff. And yes, I'm, I'm really missing it. I'll freely admit I'm looking forward to the time when those restrictions will be lifted uh, and I can get back to building on those relationships. But it doesn't mean to say my, my work is not going on because I'm uh, reaching out to people through platforms like this um, on Zoom or through telephone calls and speaking to Carl and the players on a regular basis. Yeah, I know you're still continuing to communicate with the uh, with the players, with the staff, with us all, aren't you? That's right. Um, meanwhile, the reason um, we are talking today is you've written a book. I'd love to be able to write a book. First of all, I'll come on to what the book is, but the actual mechanics of writing a book. How hard was it? Uh, my my publisher and my my literary agent said something quite interesting to me when before we actually began. And they said it takes a book to learn how to write a book and it's true i didn't know how to write a book and that was part of the learning process of actually getting down um, to doing it even if you're actually writing words down on a screen on a computer it doesn't mean to say you're writing a book uh, and having an understanding of how to write it i think has been a huge learning curve hasn't always been easy and a lot of stuff that i've written has had to be junked because it's just simply not good enough so it took about three or four months of writing before I actually cracked the idea of what I really wanted to say and how to say it. So anybody who's in the process of trying to write a book about anything that they're interested in, be patient with yourself. It takes longer than you think because you don't have to learn how to do it before you do know how to do it. So um, it is a fascinating read. It's, it's out there now. It's available in the Oxford United Club shop if people want to, uh, want to order it. Let's give it a quick plug. Um, Explain for, in simple terms, uh, what is the book about? Well, the book is called Keeping Your Head in the Game. Um, it's about 10 fictitious sports stars who enter the sort of therapy that I offer through my work. But the important thing is you don't necessarily have to be interested in sport because all the stories will give insights for about just about anything in our lives because the things that afflict sports stars, be they footballers, rugby players, cricketers, athletic stars, they affect, affect you and I. Um, and that is what my work is all about. Even if you're treating a footballer, it doesn't mean to say all you're talking about is football. Usually it isn't. It's about their relationships with their loved ones, their mums and dads, trying to stay in the team. I mean, we all have issues about staying in work and paying our mortgage. It's exactly the same for anybody involved in sport. And through the lens of working with sports people, trying to explain how I work with people uh, and going behind the dressing room door and explaining the sort of stories that come out of those conversations. Hopefully people just like you and I will learn more about how to deal with some of their lives and some of the problems that affect, affect them and afflict them. Well, it is a, fa it is a fascinating read. Um, I don't know where it will be, when, when we can have bookshops open. I don't know where it will be stored. Is it a self-help book? That's my question for you. Well, yes, it is. That's what the publishers say. It's a self-help book, but it isn't a sort of how-to book. They are, they're, they're stories. They're stories about everyday people who the types of people I come across uh, in my work, the sort of people who appeared on my radio program on Talk Sport, um, who brought their personal issues to that platform. People like Becky Adlington, Marcus Truscothic, Steve Harmison, Keith Gillespie, Sam Allardyce, Ian Holloway, people like that who are very open about the sort of personal problems that have they found hard to deal with and maybe has stopped them being the best version of themselves. Because this is about being the best version of ourselves. We can all improve. We can all find different ways to understand ourselves better. And psychotherapy, and that's the job I do, I'm a psychotherapist, is about understanding ourselves better and understanding our relationships better to help us be better versions of ourselves. And that's what the book is about. It's a, uh, if we'd done it a couple of years ago when we first started working together and stuff, it would have been a very different book. But the fact that we can talk about it, that these books, well, your book can come out now, that it's a, a public thing now, 
can only be healthy for those involved, for, for the game of football and for sport in general, I guess. Well, there's, uh, there's an awful lot of work to do, Chris. Um, I still think football lags behind other sports. And you might say, well, how do I know that? Well, I work with cricketers and rugby players and Olympians and a lot of those other sports have gone a bit further than we've managed to do. There's a but coming here, and that's my pride at Oxford United, that we have gone further than any football club in the country in bringing in somebody like me, the first ever therapist to work with uh, professional sports people. And people might say, well, surely there are sports psychologists knocking around. Yes, there are, but they're not therapists. They're not working with the personal issues that we all have to deal with in our everyday lives. And Oxford United are right at the very heart of this work because of uh, the belief system of our, our manager, Carl Robinson, who thinks that player care is hugely important. Um, so this book couldn't have been written two years ago because our attitudes to, to mental health and player care have changed. It couldn't have been written two years ago, Chris, because I didn't have the experience of what it's like working in a football club and having those hundreds and hundreds of conversations that I've managed to have at Oxford United and through my work at Oxford United, other football clubs and other players. And those um, experiences that I have had as a psychotherapist are stitched into the book. Confidentiality is key in all of this. I can't tell stories about people I work with, but I can um, explain and give a real flavour of what it's like to be a psychotherapist working in professional sport. Yeah, and I should just, to finish this off, I should stress, it's not a book about Oxford United. It's a book about your work across all, so many different sports, so many different clubs, everything else like that. It is available in the Oxford United Club shop, but it's not specific to us, is it? No, but there are things that I have learned whilst working with Oxford United, which I have used in the book about my thinking about certain situations. Situations. What do you do when you work with a player who hasn't scored a goal in six weeks? What do you do with a player who has confidence issues? This has all been learned by my working just about every day with a football club, where my knowledge base has grown about how to work with certain situations. And, uh, you know, my, my previous job, my previous career was, was a sports journalist. The stories I came across as a sports journalist were interesting. Nothing half so interesting as the stuff I've come across working as a psychotherapist. The frustrating thing for you now, you would love to be sat in Waterstones signing books, wouldn't you? But you can't do that. So uh, slightly frustrating. The books come out. It's, it's, it's great. It's out there now. But you can't do the traditional things that a successful author like you would be doing. Well, there's, yes, I'd love to be out there. We talked about socialisation and meeting people. It's something I love doing. But actually, there are some very clever marketing people working for Penguin, who are the publishers, who are trying their best to sell online. And of course, the book is available on Amazon and other platforms as well, and on the uh, websites of booksellers. So I'll leave myself in their capable hands of having to sell the book or trying to sell the book. My job was to write it and make it an interesting book and a fun book for just about everybody to read. Because if you do support Oxford United or any football club or have an interest in sport or you work with a, um, a youth team or anything like that, there'll be plenty in the book which will explain why I think about I do the job that I do and what I think about doing it and when I get it right and also when I get it wrong. This is a fantastic read uh, of anybody out there. Go and, go and get Gary's book. I'm going to move it up now. I've got a big pile of books I've got to read. I'm going to move it to third from the, from the top now. My goodness, I am honoured, Chris. You don't yeah. know how honoured I am to hear that I'm third in your list of books to read. No, I should look forward to it. Uh, no, I have, uh, I've glanced through it. I've seen a copy of it. It is a brilliant thing. Uh, people out there, look after yourself. Look after yourself, Gary. Everybody else, take care as well.